Uh, good evening. My name is Olayemi Ajibola. I work with BizTech Infrastructure Systems Limited. Um, we're distributors for 3CX, IPPBXC publication. And um, I can tell you that um, this forum is a very nice one for us to be. And um, we equally offer training like this for free to our partners. We are the distributor in Nigeria. And I can tell you that 3CX is a wonderful IPPBX that you can work with. Um, today, we're going to just focus on how to, int how to configure your 3CX to work perfectly with your MicroTik router. Because um, we found out that most of the, most of the users of um, 3CX end up complaining about remote connections, not being able to connect to their IPPBX because of the router they are using. But I can assure you that if you're using MicroTik router, it's as easy as they've been explaining since morning. It's just a click and you're done. Like I said, my name is Ajibola Olaemi. Um, I'm the MD CEO for BizTech Infrastructures. Uh, we've, been in the, we've been in the field for a while. I've been with 3CX since 2009, and I've been with MicroTik since 2011. So let's just quickly run through. I won't bore you too much with technicalities. I believe everybody here is technical, but I'll just tell you all the click and go. We'll not go through the terminal. We'll rather go through the GUI, which is the win box. And we'll see how to do what is called NAT and destination. Destination NAT and port forwarding and how to open ports for 3CX. Um, configuring MicroTik with 3CX, um, I'm going to be telling you the introduction, logging into the MicroTik, which of course I'm probably going to skip because we've seen a lot of people logging using the Winbox. Uh, then how you disable the CPLG, the port forwarding which we're actually looking at, presence and web access, CPAN and RTP ports, tunnel ports, inbound asset list, questions and answers, and that will be all. I have just 15 minutes and I can assure you it's just 15 minutes. Okay, uh, the document actually describes the configuration of my RB 2011. That is the one we're going to look at. Um, use this device with 3CX and you should be compatible with any device of the series. Meaning if you are using the RB 1100 as well, you get the same thing. If you are using the 750G, you get the same thing. As long as you are using the MicroTik, I believe the protocols are the same. First, you log into your MicroTik with the Winbox, like we all are familiar with. It's, if you are using the old version, just click the small box beside. It gives you all the available ones you can see. If you are using the new one, that box is not there. I don't like using the old version. Ah, the new version, I prefer using the old one so that it can help me scan through. Uh, but if you go to neighborhood, then on the neighborhood, you can now see those ones there. And then, But a lot of people hardly go to that tab. That is why I don't use it as well. Uh, so once you click on it, and it shows you the micro you are going into. All you have to do is connect with the IP address, your username and password. Once you are in, you need to go to the IP, firewall, service port. The only thing you need to do here is what? Your SIP, you disable it. The SIP ALG, disable that port. That is the first step you need to carry out. And once that is being done, I can assure you that 3 cs automatically register and other phones will be able to register, your IP phones will be able to register on 3CX, but you might not be able to have remote connection yet. But the phones will automatically show on your 3CX interface, meaning you can do your provisioning. Either on the LAN, or you're doing your VPN, or you're doing your MPLS, or you're doing your PPT, like you've been doing all the connections you've been doing ever since. They will all register, and if you're using the SBS, which is the session border controller in 3CX, which is equally free as well, it registers, but remote extensions will not register, and your connection will be distorted. What I mean is, you have a one-way audio. So the way to solve this problem is to open the correct ports. So we do what is called port forwarding. I just briefly describe here. Let's assume uh, we're using the IP address of the server to be 192.168. Dot one dot ten, and then you are on the slash twenty four. All you need to do is go to the interface of your router and enable. Like I said, if you are having the public as one two three four, 
and the one facing your router as 192.168.1.1 and your LAN as well as 192.168.1.0 slash 24 where your server is dot 10. All we want to achieve is anybody that is hitting 1234 on a specific port and I, 3CX uses port 5000 for HTTP, 5001 for HTTPS which is the secured. Uh, that is the standard but you can decide to change the port. Then 5060 is your SIP protocol, which everybody knows. And then 5090 is for your remote extensions. And then if you're using 9000 to 9500, that is for VoIP providers. So all we want to achieve here now is using our MicroTIC router. Once you click on 1234, 1.2.3.4, that's what I mean. It should take you straight to the server and you should be able to register remotely. That's what we want to achieve. And that is what we refer to as destination NAT. So all we have to do is go to your IP, go to your firewall, go to your NAT. Then when you get to your NAT, you click the plus sign. Once you click the plus sign, what you are looking for now is under the chain, you chain that first one to destination NAT. Your destination address is 1.2.3.4. Your protocol is TCP. Your destination port can be 5,000, like I said, if you are allowing HTTP. But if you are allowing HTTPS, which I prefer, that's uh, a secured platform better than the HTTP, then you change that destination port to 5000, 5001. And the next thing you do is your action is called destination NAT. Your destination address is 192.168.1.10, like we said earlier on, which is the IP address of the IPPBX, that's the 3CX server. And then you specify the port you specified earlier on on the previous slide. If you have specified 5000 here on, on TCP, you do the same thing on the next slide, 5,000 as well. I prefer to leave the port blank in this case. I would rather leave this port blank. Reason is this. If I leave it blank, it means the previous slide as well, I'm going to leave this port destination port blank. It means I'm opening the ports. So if you call for 5,000 or you call for 5,001, the router allows you to pass through by default. That's what it simply means. But if I want to be very specific so that like we've been saying all the while, hackers, sniffers, everybody here and there, you can specify the ports that is required. Okay, um, the following commands will be enable, will enable the port forwarding from your 3CX interface, from your one to your 3CX interface, like I've explained, and that is actually called destination NAT. Like I told you, we're not going to stay long. Now, if you, are, if you want to be very funny with your customer, Maybe the person standing next to you is an IT person and you have an SLA with them and probably you just want to juggle some few things so that they don't get to see the GUI you are using. This will be on the, f this will be, this, this is very useful for you. Everything I've narrated is just here. It's as easy as, you know, the first thing I said was you go to your IP, you go to your um, firewall and then you go to your service port. And you disable IP firewall. You disable CPLG, the same thing. Just the same thing is here. So ordinarily, if you want to play a fast one on your customer, just hide behind the scene of terminal, and you've done the same thing again. <laughs> it's just to make more money, that's just all. <laughs> this is from the business perspective. So you can actually look at this, and then the same thing is applicable, and you can go further from here. Um, it's just the continuation of the same thing, which I said earlier on. All the things I've said in the GUI, which was just click and go. That's how simple MicroTik has made it. And the same thing you're having in this long epistle, which will take you eternity. You can actually copy them in Notepad and just paste them and run them. It still works. I told you I was going to spend 15 minutes, and I think I'm done. <laughs> so if we have any questions as regards 3CX, you can see me afterwards. If you have as regards this one that we're calling destination NAT on how to make your SIP work, can we hear that now? And if there are no questions, if we are clear, thank you very much. Oh, okay. Okay.
Okay. Um, the question is actually not micro tick question. It's actually a 3CX question, and I'll answer you very fast. Um, you can change your port on 3CX to any port you want. But mind you, the device, um, whatever system you are installing 3CX on, try as much as possible to make sure there is only 3CX that is running on it, and that port is not being used by another service. That's the problem you're probably going to have. If you change from 5,000 and you change to port 80, which used to be the previous one 3CX used to use then, if you change to port 80, when you call your browser up, you are trying to call your browser to browse, and then you see 3CX loading. You are trying to use 3CX, your browser is loading. I, I, am I making sense? So it's as easy as that. Do we have any other question? <laughs>